Hello and welcome to Blue Inversion. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a microbe in Blender. I'll be your host, Shyan. So let's get started with the tutorial. Let us look at the outline of this video. First, we deal with the scene setup, including the camera settings and the lighting. Then we move on to get the basic shader down and then animate that shader and get the final result as you saw in the preview animation. We will start by opening up a new Blender file. Select the cube, press X to delete, Shift A and we will add a sphere. Under the Modify stack, add two modifiers, Subdivision Surface and the other one also a subdivision surface modifier. Let's call it subdivision 2. Set it to simple. Go under the render properties and if you haven't already switch to cycles. Feature set experimental. This is important. We'll be using the experimental feature set to get this adaptive checkbox. What it does is that the geometry closer to the camera gets more details and the further away you get it gets less and less detailed so it saves a lot of resources now let's add the camera we already have a camera in the scene so all we need to do is press accent grip on your keyboard switch to front and press ctrl alt 0 on the numpad and that will frame the camera to the viewport and then you can use shift accent grip to switch on the fly navigation and then w a s d q and r to navigate the viewport I will go under the camera data properties and change the focal length to 35. This is a personal choice because I wanted the camera to get really close to the object so that I can use depth of field effectively. You can skip this. I'll also change the resolution. Now very quickly let us set up the lighting. We already have a light here. It's, it's a point lamp. So select that and change it to an area lamp. It's under the object data properties. I will go to the top view. I'm using G to translate R to rotate the lamp and now I will play a time lapse of me setting up a 3 point lighting system. A 3 point lighting system has a key light, a fill light and a rim light. If you are unsure of what I'm talking about, get some reference online and you will get to know it really quickly. I will switch to the rendered preview mode and then make final adjustments to the lights. And before that, let's go to the world properties and I will change the background color to something very dark. Make sure it's not it's not completely black, otherwise things start looking uninteresting, in my opinion. It's an artistic choice by the way. It does not really matter that much what we're doing here because we do not have the shaders yet and it, we don't really know how it will look in under that lighting setup. So we will have a very rough estimation and then we will move on with the shading and come back later. Let's get started with the real deal now that is the shading part and generally I will switch to the shading workspace but recently I decided not to use the shading workspace in my tutorials anymore because I don't really like the way it is spaced out and the real estate is used. So let's quickly set up a custom workspace here. A quick tip here, you can use the shift key in conjunction with the function keys on your keyboard and you can switch these editor types. So shift function 3 is for the shader editor. Select the sphere, click new. Let's call this microbe. So here's this thing that I always do before starting a shader. I'll get rid of the unnecessary stuff and isolate the things that we are actually going to use. Press shift A, input. And you can use anything which has an output. I'm just going to use the value. And then I'll just plug it into the things that I'm going to use. Or at least change. And then select the principal BSDF node and press Ctrl H. Now the unnecessary things are hidden. And we can get rid of this node here. By the way, I'm using the node wangler here. Although you can work without it, I highly recommend that you enable it in the editor preference. And now I will switch to the rendered mode and quickly get started with the principal BSDF. So the base color that I used for the final animation was somewhat like this. I will copy this color with Ctrl C, Ctrl V. I will paste it on the subsurface color. 
and let's change it a little bit let's give it a little bit of hue shift i'll give it a slight amount of subsurface scattering I found out that a value of 0.4 for the specular and the roughness worked pretty well with this. Right here you can see you have the list of subsurface methods. We will be using random walk because that is more realistic. Since it has subsurface scattering it is going to be a bit noisy. So I will go under the render properties and increase the viewport samples. That should be fine. Now the next step. Give it some displacement because that is the source of the shader. Everything else is just the principled PSDF. The shader displacement requires one more step before we can start working on it. Click on material properties, scroll to the bottom and under settings you have displacement. And the displacement method right now is bump only. We will be using displacement only here. Practically speaking, we can use the vector displacements and we can do vector manipulation and vector math to get the results for, uh, that you have seen in the preview animation. But uh, I was playing around with the shader editor and I made this video because as you can see it's titled beginner. So we are not going to use vector math of course. It gets complicated really quickly. So we'll be using a less explored texture. That's the magic texture. So press shift A texture magic texture and this is what we'll be using now it's not very flexible for other kind of effects but for this one it works really well and it, it looks pretty uh, decent for a microbe kind of look if you will now you can plug this directly into the displacement but it will not look right because the displacement space is not yet specified so we will press shift a vector displacement node and here you can see that we can specify the displacement space and it will work pretty well. Make sure you plug that factor into the height and you can see already that we are getting some pretty interesting results. And by the way, we need subdivisions on the sphere for this to work. That's why we added the subdivision surface modifier in the first few minutes of this tutorial. Now you can see that the vector for this magic texture is left open. That is because by default, the textures in Blender use the generated texture coordinate. So we are not going to bother with that. Uh, right now it doesn't really look like what we saw in the preview animation. So there's only this one little tweak that you need to do is increase the depth to a level of 7. And there you go. You already have a pretty good looking uh, microbe. And what I noticed is that the distortion right here is pretty related to the opening and closing of this tubular kind of things. So that's what we are going to use to our advantage and make an animation for them. So we can call the shader complete and that is for the static look of this microbe. But if you want to animate it like in the preview we saw at the start of this video, then we need to make some uh, other changes and add some more nodes here. The animation mainly involves the magic texture and nothing else. If I set this to 0.8, then the tubules sort of close and a value of 1.3 is a complete opening. So we are going to map this range of 0.8 to 1.3 to a 0 to 1 range so that we can use it conveniently. And then we are going to animate that range so that it gives off this effect of opening and closing of the tubules. Now as you may have noticed that this scene is a little bit heavy on computation. Any changes we make here takes a certain amount of time to update here before we can see it clearly. So that latency is not suitable for making minor changes and to test the animation. So for testing purposes I generally switch to the material preview with Z on your keyboard and then we get this preview EV render, which updates real time by the way. And that's super helpful when you want to make prototypes and testing your animation and stuff. So let's get started. Press Shift A, input the value node. And then we are going to use a range of 0 to 1 here. I will set this to 0. And then I'll use this new node, relatively new node, called map range. 
what we're going to do is plug this value into the first input and the result into the distortion. Now it's all weirded out because we have not set the minimum maximum. So for the from minimum to the from maximum does not uh, need any kind of changes. So we will leave it untouched because we really have a range of 0 to 1. So that is what it is by default. But the to minimum to maximum is the value it is getting mapped to 2 in the result here. And as we saw that the minimum that is the closed phase should be 0.8 and the open phase should be 1.3. So now if you change this value here, you'll see that from 0 to 1, it gives you the opening and closing range. Perfect. I will set this to 0 for now. Now the next step will be to animate this value here. It is 24 frames per second under here. You can check it out. Yeah, 24 frames per second. I want a two second animation, so I will set this to 48. This will be the end frame. And we will have a keyframe at 0, 24 and 48 because I want one second to complete the process of closing or opening the tubules. So at frame number 0, let's add a keyframe here for a value of 0. Hover your mouse pointer over this and press I on the keyboard. Now let's go to frame number 24. Another keyframe. To the last frame. Zero again. Another keyframe. Now if you play this. It has already started working. Now the thing here is that all the tubules are opening and closing exactly at the same time which is uh, not re really interesting, so let's make it interesting. Shift A, color, invert. You can see that it inverts the condition of the tubule at a certain frame. So that's what we need. Now we want this invert to work on certain parts of the sphere and the other parts should be left untouched. Then we can have opening and closing of the tubules at those parts at different times relative to others. So that creates a much more interesting effect. So how can we achieve that? We have this factor here. So we can use that factor, right? Let's try it. Let's use a noise texture here. I will preview it. We need much more contrast on the noise texture. So we will use a converter color ramp. It always works straight out of the box. And we just need to squish these two handles and get something like this. A scale of 7 or 8 works well. I will hide this one. I don't need to see it all the time. Now let's plug this into the invert factor here. Isn't that cool? So yeah, that is the final effect that we have and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Now all we need to do is render it in cycles. Before that, I'll uh, make sure that we have the denoising data turned on and I will quickly show you how it's done. Let's switch to the compositing workspace, use nodes and then I'm just quickly showing you how to do it. Just use the render layers here. You have all this new data pop up with the denoising data. Press shift A. I'll search for denoising. Just put in there. Use the noisy image and plug all this denoising albedo in the normal and that's it. You and you're set. You just need to render it with control function 12 and you're done. And I have added some more like camera movements and depth of fill effects, some color correction and stuff, but that's all fine. Uh, this is the base. This is what the fundamental of this tutorial was. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next tutorial. Thank you.